Iran is located in the Middle East, connected to Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, and Turkey. It operates under what is known as a unitary republic, operating under a cleric who assumes a similar duty to what we know as the head of state. Relations with Iran have begun to get shaky over the past few years due to various events, most notably the trade embargo placed on Iran in 1995, but it has been hard to communicate with Iranians about climate change and where they stand on the issue. The climate in Iran changes based on where in the country the data is taken, but does seem to follow a consistent pattern. <clears throat> Much of Iran consists of deserts, raising the temperature during the warm months and on a large scale, raising the average climate of the area. Deserts have also have a catch. During the coldest months, the temperature in Iran can hover around 5 degrees Celsius, and the hottest months can hover between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. A factor that will likely prove to be pivotal in Iran's contribution to global heating would be the wars that have gone on in and around the area of Iran. The most current and notable of these conflicts being the Iraqi Civil War and the Syrian Civil War. The effects of war are never beneficial to the environment, and Iran's contribution to these battles should be included in their effect on the global climate. Iran is considered the seventh largest contributor to climate change in the world, based largely on its, quote, significant production of oil, gas, and rapid urbanization. Iran is also considered to be the absolute highest contributor to the climate change in the Middle East, as it partakes in the actions on levels beyond other countries in the area. The effect of these statistics are clear on the environment. Bodies of war water are shrinking and disappearing. Iran's second largest lake, Lake Bukhtigan, was a place that fueled agriculture for miles around. The lake provided people with a source of water and was the, quote, backbone of the surrounding communities. Not only was it an important landmark for locals, but it was also an important landmark for animals from both near and far. It's reported that over 20,000 migratory birds would travel to the lake and remain there during the winter. However, none of these factors still apply. Due to the rise in climate in the area, precipitation has halted almost to a standstill and has caused the lake to dry up. Not only are the birds forced to find a new migratory spot, but farmers and people of the area are struggling to recover from the lack of available water. Iran needs to adapt new strategies or look to the future in terms of bleak climate change. Due to their large output of carbon in the atmosphere, Iran has been under a severe drought for almost 10 years. Iran is expected, assuming no correction is made, to have a 2.6 degrees Celsius increase in temperature over the coming years. Not only that, but even under its drought, Iran's precipitation is expected to drop around 35% in the next 5 to 10 years. Of course, this is a slope that only gets steeper without action. If nothing is done, we can expect to see other lakes and bodies of water in Iran to dry and provide even scarcer availability of water to the people of the country. Of course, with less availability of water for the water cycle to pull on in the area, that reduces precipitation even further. We expect to see a vicious cycle of drought in the area, which will start to break down the geography of the area via wind erosion. Less water means less vegetation. Less vegetation makes erosion much more common, especially in a desert environment where sediment sits loose in large areas. We have also seen an increase, a decrease in biodiversity of the area with the migratory birds at Lake Bukhtigan, but it doesn't stop there. Water and diversity of life in the area are proportional. If we allow water to availability to drop, we are effectively allowing biodiversity to fail. Iran has started to fight climate change, and they have adopted a strategy like that of the Paris Agreement and the Kyoto Protocol, an aim to reduce CO2 emissions as much as possible while still being able to maintain a sufficient source of energy for the populace. As far as specific policies being implemented and further elaboration on the exact protocols that Iran intends to use to reshape their carbon footprint, there are actually very little details. After a fair amount of research, no concrete policies or procedures seem to be known as to what exactly Iran means when they say they want to clean up the environment. Protesters and rebellions have fueled Iran to make statements and announcements of their ideas to mitigate climate change, but there is still little evidence to support their words. <clears throat>